Praise the Lord. Amen. Now turn around and give someone a great big smile, you among friends tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We thank God for being here tonight. We happy to see all the beautiful faces that came out to worship the Lord on a big old Tuesday night. Amen. Better known as family night. Round full of gospel. Mother, bring your daughter. Dad, bring your son. And let us worship the Lord together. Certainly God is concerned about the whole family. Amen. And if God had his way, everybody would be saved. Amen. Just think what this world would be like if everybody was saved. Amen. Living according to the word of God. Let's see the hands of everyone that loves the word of God. How many want, you, want it preached straight to you? Amen. Pray God. I see some people drink coffee and they say they want it straight. No sugar, no cream, no nothing. I don't like it with cream and sugar. But if I was going to drink it, I'd have to have, praise God, coffee and cream. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we was talking about having it straight. And when it's straight, it's pure. Amen. And it takes the pure word of God to deliver. How many got your Bibles tonight? Hold them up. Let's see them. All right, we want you to open them up to the seventh chapter of Matthew. Now, praise God, we've been, in case this is your first time here and you're starting up with us, praise God, we've been teaching, praise God, in the book of Matthew, praise God, about the sermon on the mount. And we start off with the be attitudes. Be at this attitude at all times. Amen. Praise God, and the sermon on the mount is a great message. Amen. It's a sermon, praise God, of a saved person living on the face of this earth. Listen, if we would live by the word of God, it would be a, we'd have a beautiful life down here. Amen. I don't know why so many people don't want to, to accept the word of God as it is. Amen. We got a lot of people, praise God, I'm not saying this, trying to criticize, but praise God, we live in a day and time and people just don't want to live by the word of God. They have their own brand of religion. Amen. It does seem like they have the attitude. They're going to do like those that build a tower. They're going to heaven some other way. But how many realize tonight, the only way we're going to make it is through God's word. The Bible said we're saved by the word. We're clean through the word. And I find out, praise God, this is whosoever will. Amen. It's not, you're not to be made to do nothing. Amen. Living for the Lord is voluntarily. Amen. You have to volunteer to get into this army. Amen. And it's up to you. This is an individual. But I think God is fixed so if you want to make it, nobody can hinder you. Amen. And I don't know about you, but my mind is made up to go all the way with the Lord. The Apostle Paul said we have hope in Christ in this life only with all men most miserable. So there's more to this life than material things. And I think this is a time that the saints of God need to, to want to grow up in God. Amen. Not always that what you hand out. Don't you know it's better to be able to hand out than to take a hand out. That's what the Bible says. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, we don't look at that. Praise God. It seems like it ought to be more better to receive than to give. But see, it's a blessing to have enough to give and share with someone else. I would hold on rather give out candy than have my hand out to receive candy. What am I saying? Pray there's so many people, they don't want to get no further praise God and come to God, give me, give me, give me. But God wants us to be able to receive from him and give out. So that means that we have to grow up in God. Amen. There's higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord. And the Lord saved us that we might be able to lead somebody else to Christ. How many is concerned about that? Now, pray that we thank God for the blessings. There's a lot of blessings. These are some of the benefits that go along with salvation. Amen. God promised to meet our needs. He promised to hear our cry. Well, amen. Promised to give us the desires of our heart. These are some of the benefits that go along with salvation. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? But it seemed like because people would rather gain the world and then see about get their soul. But it doesn't work that way, man. 
So praise God, the Lord, praise God, the last lesson we had, the Lord let us know, brought to our attention about the fowls of the air and the lilies of the field and how beautiful, praise God, they were and how God take care of the fowls of the air. Amen? Everything that God has created, he has been able to take care of it and to sustain it. Amen? And praise God, we know that the birds, they don't plant, they don't sow, but they're still here. God blesses them, amen. And just like the lilies of the field, praying they come out, they're so beautiful and green. You know, man, with all his wisdom and knowledge, he can't put that green in a lily. The flower was like God. Amen. When God decides for the grace to turn brown, it turns brown. I don't care what you do to it. Amen. Then in the spring of the year, how many like to go down in the country in the fall of the year? Amen. Pray. Can you see God's handwork? Amen. Praise God. I love to go down in East Texas, especially going down to Marshall. It's one long hill. I like to go down. Praise God. In the fall of the year, you see some of the leaves, the yellow, some of them are brown, some tan, and some green. Man, it's beautiful. Amen. Whose handwork is that? That's God. Amen. But then the Lord lets us know that we're more important than the trees, the grass, the birds, the fowl of the air. So we are something special. Amen. Say, I'm something special. Now, how many feel like you, not to get lifted up, amen, but we are God's masterpiece of his creation. And God has something better for us. Amen. You think you're blessed down here, praise God. I, I'll tell you, Brother Alfred, a few months. I feel happy. Now, I don't know what I'm happy about, but I just, I start feeling it just before I left the house. <laughs> Amen. You know, have you ever just, you just, maybe I can't explain what I'm talking about. Amen. I don't know. I, I thank God for being saved at all times, but look, like I have another feeling. Well, glory. Oh, it's good to be on the Lord's side. Amen. I'm not worried about what they're doing out there. I'm not worried about what they're getting away with. I'm just enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. See, you have to want this. It has to get it down into your heart. Get out on the inside. Amen. God don't want to persuade you if you don't want to go. Amen. But now we've been to change subject now. God has a way of turning you on real good and slapping you in the face. Whew. Amen. But you know it all for our benefit. Amen. God can lift you way up and then let you down slow. Amen. But all of us for our good. Amen. God loves us. Just like your mother. Your mother loved you, but sometimes she had to say, come here. Come here. You start whining. You know what's coming. Hey, Amen. I told you I was going to get you. And she had to get us. But I thank God it made some good boys and girls out of some of us. Amen. Amen. Maybe you weren't afraid of them, but I never did get used to them. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I didn't get very many, but sometimes I would forget and they would mind, remind me of it. Amen. All right, we're going to this seventh chapter of the book of Matthew. Jesus is our teacher and preacher. Now, how many believe that, we, you know, sometimes we can get our eyes off of the main route. Amen. Now, sometimes it seems like it's hard for some people to, to believe this when they look out there. Hey, Amen. we got some of the other things going on now. And this is the reason Jesus warned us nothing has ever happened that God would allow it to slip upon his people if they would be watchful. Hey, Amen. Now the Bible said man loved darkness because his deeds are evil. Now um, the Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, 
but my word shall stand forever. Then it says, I'm the Lord thy God, I change is not. Amen? Now, if I understand that right, praise God, what God has said, he still means that. Amen? Amen? But now, if you would allow yourself to look at what your eyes see, you would change. Amen? This reading is so important. We that are saved is study the word. That we might know where we stand with God and where we're going. Amen. Because many things of the day that's wearing the name of religion is not according to God's word. Amen. I was listening to the other day and the world rejoices when God's people look like it's failing or falling. Amen. And they already got some criticism out for the church. And one of the main thing is the orphan bucket. Well, amen. They think it's a disgrace for the preacher. They want to say it to the preacher to receive an orphan. Amen. They're always talking about the orphan plate, orphan bucket. Amen. And they were showing one of the new churches now of the day. And they say the crowds are flocking to it. Now, if we would look at that, preachers, we would get discouraged and say, look like maybe, maybe I, I, I'm not doing something right. Amen? But look at the crowd they're drawing. And they come to church any kind of way. Amen? You don't have to give up nothing. Amen? And oh, they are helping the poor. Even going far enough to fix the poor people's cars. Amen. It's charity work. All of that is good. Amen. You got somebody, we have a mechanic, and they want to fix your car. And because you, nothing wrong with that. But then they say, well, yeah, they, they, they're not putting any infants on money. Well, now, the Bible said for us to ask, and the Bible said give. Amen. So ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen? But the Bible said, what would a prophet man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen? Now, the Bible said come out from among you, mean the world, and be separated, because with the light we cannot stay in darkness and let our light shine. But then I heard Paul said, if I would have wisdom to understand all mysteries, faith to move mountains, and have not charity, to it profit me nothing. Even though if I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Now what am I saying? After all of that, if we expect to go back with Jesus when he come, we got to live by the book because God said, I'm the Lord thy God, our change is not. Amen. God's people have always been in the minority. Amen. Now, as we get into our lesson tonight, God is teaching us how to live successfully down here on the face of this earth. Amen. Now sometimes it looks like, we're, man, we're, we're, we set aside. But every now and then I run into one of those backsliders. And brother, you look at them for just a little while. Some of them I couldn't even recognize. And I used to pass them. Amen. So sin is taking its toll. So it pays to stay with God. All right, let's read here a little bit. Now, I start off here kind of a little rough here, but read. Chapter 7. Judge not. Judge not, the, the Lord says. That ye be not judged. We have no business judge. Now, there's many definitions for 
judge or judgment. But I believe here he's talking about criticism. Hmm? Drawing an opinion about something you don't know anything about. Amen? Now, it's different in knowing something and judging something. See, you judge from evidence that's been gathered, accumulated. Amen? But now, if you know something, you don't have to judge that. You know it. Amen? Now, God wants us to live a victorious life. He wants us to get along with one another. And this is one thing can keep people separated. It can upset a home and cause it to be broke up. You're always spinning your opinion. You're always on the judgment seat. The Bible says, judge not that ye be not judged. In other words, what you judge is going to come back to you. You judge somebody, and somebody gonna judge you. Amen. Everything look like may look like some may not be it. Amen. We hear the phrase she say. Amen. I heard this many times, especially in daily with members. Sometimes the husband he's so so caught up. That the word wow can't even please him, let alone God. If you were saved, you wouldn't do this, you wouldn't do that. Don't do that. Amen. You make her uncomfortable, you make him uncomfortable. Amen. And everything look like it's wrong may not be wrong when you really take time to look into it. Amen? And sometimes we judge other fellow. We don't know why they did what they did. And sometimes after we spend our opinion, then when we get to the other side of it, then we, find we feel guilty because we are wrong. There's always two sides to anything. Some people come up to you, man, they can tell you a story and look like it ain't nothing but the truth. Wait a minute, you can't spend your opinion till you get the other side of the situation. Once you get the other side, then it said some more light. Amen? Everybody's going to give you their side. So the Bible tells us to judge not. Amen? That you be not judged. See, you're going to reap what you sow. Now, nope. People don't want to like to talk about it, but this is the word of God. Can I just preach what the word says? Amen. Amen. Now, this upsets home. It breaks up home. It causes people to break, break fellowship because somebody's always on the judgment seat pointing the finger at somebody else. You know what I practice? First, to examine myself. Amen. Amen. This, this is where I start at before I jump off on somebody else. Amen. See, you must examine. See, the Bible said, consider yourself. Amen. When you start dealing with somebody else, first consider yourself. Right. How would you feel? Amen? See, this causes us to live a victorious life. It causes us to be able to get along with one another. Amen? Get me a Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault. Now listen here. It, this wouldn't be if it wasn't a possibility that a person could be overtaken in a fault. Amen? Is that right? But listen what it says. If a man be overtaken if in a fault. If a man, now this is talking about a brother or sister in the Lord. If a man be overtaken in a fault. In a fault. 
ye which are spiritual, ye which are spiritual, restore such a restore one, such a one in the spirit of meekness, in the spirit of meekness, kindness, meekness. Considering thyself, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, lest thou also be tempted. Now, as so long as you're on the faith that if you haven't made it yet, Amen. You haven't made it yet, Amen. So it's no need of you standing up, praying, walking on somebody else because they fail. And many times people in the church are guilty of this. And this caused confusion. Amen. It's not the will of God. Sure, you're strong right now. Amen. Pick, what is saying? Pick the brother up. Knock the dirt off. Amen. Restore him. You're not going to restore him, judging him and criticizing him. I know she was going to backslide. The Lord revealed that to me. Well, keep that to yourself. Amen. And this happening on. Sometimes, praise God, I see people get saved. And they get, just get all upset because the husband don't come in and get saved right immediately. And it took them 40 years to come into the night and get saved. And because you don't got saved, you want them to get saved the next two weeks. And if not, you all upset. I just can't stay with that devil. Well, you've been with him 25 years. I can't stand them cigarettes. But think about how long you blow smoke in somebody else's face. Give them a chance. Show them some love, some compassion. Amen? You see people like that? So Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. Read Galatians. Bear ye one another's burdens. Bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Read. For if a man think himself to be something. For if a man think himself to be something. See, it's no place in the kingdom of God for pride. The Bible said pride come just before fall. Read. If a man think himself to be something. If a man think himself to be something. When he is nothing. When he's nothing. Have you seen people like that? Man, they so lifted up. You wonder what they lifted up by. Amen. Let's go with that again. For if a man think himself. For if a man think himself. To be something. To be something. When he is nothing. Now you think you something. Everybody else know you ain't nothing. He deceiveth himself. He deceiveth himself. Now this is a bad state to be in. Amen. Read. But let every man prove his own work. But let work. every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself and alone. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. And Read. not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. For every man shall bear his own burden. Now you shouldn't expect somebody to come in and help you with every little thing. Help, help, help. Bear your own burden. Then when you need help, then call for help. But don't call for help before you get started. Read. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Now listen, the way to be strong is to get with strong people. You will never stay strong running with weak folks. I don't understand that. Now I'm just teaching the word. You can run with whoever you want to. But if you want to be strong, Listen, you can't be strong, you can't stay saved when some people are already talking about the word. There will be a lot of some of these single sisters backslide. You go ahead and start talking about old Joe and old Jack and all of that. Child, when I was, before I got saved, let's leave that before you got saved. You saved now. So let's leave that out there. huh? Because if you start concentrating on that too much, see, and if you get with somebody else like to talk about that, huh? But you want somebody's gonna talk about the law. Somebody's gonna pray and see God and 
talk about the word, then you, you stay strong. You become strong in the Lord. Read that again. Let him that is taught in the word. Let him that is taught in the word. Communicate unto communicate him Communicate what? Unto him. Unto him. That teacheth. That teaches. In all good things. In all good things. Those are the type of people you want to associate with. Amen. So you see, you can't run with any and everybody and be saved. Amen. Read. Be not deceived. Listen what the Bible says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a For man soweth. For whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also that reap. That shall he also. It's coming back. So praise God. If you don't want to reap what you sow, then make sure you sow good seed. Amen. Now when it come back, it'll be a whole lot worse than when you sowed it. Amen. Now you can sow one grain of corn. And look what will happen. Amen. It will multiply. And you, praise God, if you don't sow evil deeds, then evil deeds is coming back. Amen. We must remember that. Amen. All right, let's get back to the judge not that you be not judged. Don't be so quick. Praise God to cast somebody into the pit. Amen? Now, there is a possibility that that person have not come into the light that you have came into. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, that's different when a person is faced with the truth and just flat out right rejected. That's a different story. Amen? I believe any true born again child of God is seeking to know the truth, to know the will of God. Amen. And as they come in the light, they will walk in the light. Amen. But we got a group of people that flatly reject the truth. Well, Jesus is going to tell us how to deal with them a little later on. Amen. But the point is, we don't want to be guilty. Sometimes people kill people. Amen. In the church, they kill people, but they always point out, and you, if you were saved, you, you ain't saved. Then look back at yourself, are you saved? Huh? Listen, if you was really spiritual, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. Amen, you want to encourage people. Amen, let's read this next verse. For with what judgment For ye with judge, what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Then I just read you, read what you saw. Or just what judgment you judge with, you're going to be judged. Read. And with what measure you meet. And with what measure you meet. It shall be measured to you again. It shall be measured back to you again. It's coming back the same way. And it always hurt when it come back. Amen. If you didn't make the right judgment, then when it come back, it's going to hurt. And many times, people can't take it. You take one us. You take a man, man. He he can go out and roam the streets. He can shoot drugs, drink alcohol, and and just run wild women and man. And he can live it up and poor wife at home crying and children doing without. But just let her go out one time. Then he's all upset, or she's all upset. She can't take it. What you upset about? You should have thought about that when you were. Amen. It's kind of quiet today. Have you seen people like that? Man, sometime they had a women's call in the house and just run over the little woman. No, oh, you're having a big time then. But, but when she gets fed up with that stuff, and I'm not saying for you to do that because they don't need you trying to get even with no man. Amen. Ain't no need you trying to go out there and sin and dirty yourself and your soul trying to get back at your husband or your wife. But listen, now I, I just want to see how a person could do that. And then when, when it, the shoe gets on another foot and you all upset. Amen. How you think she felt when you was running and chasing? Now that's no excuse to sin. But now... You bought the medicine, take it. Amen? You sowed the seed, so you're supposed to reap it. That's what the book says. What you sow in the flesh, the Bible said you're going to reap in the flesh. What you sow into the spirit, you're going to reap in the spirit. Amen? Is that all right? 
That's what Jesus is talking about. All right, let's read. And why beholdest thou the moat? And why beholdest thou the moat? That is in thy brother's eye. That's in your brother's eye. But considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye. Moat is a little bit of something, you know. Moat is a little bit of something that gets in your eye. Just, let's read it again. And why beholdest thou? Beholdest thou the moat? The moat that is in thy that's brother's eye. Brother. Otherwise, you judging him, you condemning him. And he just got a little bit old moat in his eye. He can see around it. He can look over it because it's small. But you so upset, you gonna backslide. You know, there's something I don't understand about you. We I don't all them preachers. Listen. Man's been backsliding since the history of time. Amen. Women's too. Amen. And there is nothing, I don't care how many preachers backslide, there is no excuse for you not to be saved. Amen. Because God got some righteous preachers. Amen. A lot of people want to run to, find an excuse they want to run to David. But what about Moses and Caleb and the Joshua's and Enos and all of those. Why don't you get one of them? The point is you're trying to find something to justify you and you can't find nothing to justify your sin. Well, I would get saved by so many hypocrites in the church. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll never get saved staying out there where you're at. There's a whole lot of bunch of them out there. So if you can stay with them in the world, why can't you stay with them in the church? Amen. So what you do is an excuse. Now I realize a preacher is supposed to be a priest up an example. Amen. He's supposed to live what he preached. He's supposed to be an example. Amen. But we will fall out with a preacher because he get caught funny came. But how many times you been back in the line? Now I'm not talking about everybody. But a whole lot of members slip up in the line. I want to rededicate myself. I want to renew my spirit. Yeah, you need renewing. Amen. How am I doing? How am I doing? Huh? Just the truth? So see, what is, all right, now, you, 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 your brother got a moat, but the Bible says you got a big old beam. I don't see nothing big as a beam. I mean, know what a beam is. Amen. A great big old beam up there in your eye, and you can't. And you're trying to get the moat out of his. <laughs> now, I know where you gonna get the moat out of his eye. You got a beam in yours. Amen. See, this is what the Lord said. We got people like that. Amen. But then just as soon as they do something, man, they want everybody to come to their rescue. So what did Jesus say here? Let's go over it again. And why beholdest thou the moat? Behold thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye. That is in thy brother's eye. But considereth not but the beam. But consider not the beam that is in that thine, is own, in thine own, eye. own eye. Other words, now before you get the moat out of your brother, try to get it out of his eye, get the beam out of yours. Make sure you're in a position. Huh? To get the moat. Now the moat need to be moved. But you can't move it when you got a beam in your eye. Amen? So what you have to do, praise God, is stop and get the beam out of your eye where you can see clearly how to get the moat out of your brother. Read. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Read. Thou hypocrite. Jesus is teaching tough, isn't he? Ooh. I don't think Brother Murray ought to say that. Can I say what Jesus said? He said, Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam. First cast out the beam. Out of thine own eye. Out of thine own eye. And then shalt thou see clearly. And then shall thou see clearly. To cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Out of thy brother's eye. Other words, what are you saying here? Pray live and let live. Amen. 
Is anything hard about this? Huh? See, hey, before you start judging someone else, kind of judging by someone else, make sure you're in a position. Amen? Now, pray that evil to help one. Now, see, this would, this would cause confusion. Amen? I didn't fault with everything. Really, when it's not even there, man, you can talk with them, they can find some fault. Fault finders. Amen? But now, the point is, God wants us to live as brothers and sisters. Amen? Now, love, praise God, covers a multitude of sin. Pray God, love, see that brother, praise God, scuffling and, and get down and help him up. Amen? Now, if you see a person, praise God, that's far away, well, you know he's weak. Amen? So he needs help. So what do you do? You're not going to help him criticizing him. Amen? Only way you can help is go to him in the spirit of meekness and restore the brother. Let him know you still have faith in him. You're concerned about him. Now, once you go to him in the spirit of meekness, then he said, leave me alone. Well, then that's of a different story. He know what he's doing. He intend to do it. Amen? Then you leave that fellow alone. Amen? But so many times we drive people away from God by the way we act. I've seen people win people to the Lord, then turn around and destroy them. We're not supposed to be destroyed. We want to praise God, restore. Amen? All right, read. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. All right, here's the point. Give not that which is holy to the dog. Now, he's not talking about a four-legged dog here. Give not that which is holy to the dog, neither cast ye thy pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now this is a person has flatly rejected the truth. Amen. It's no need you waste no time with him trying to win him to the Lord, trying to teach him. How many times have you seen people just mock you? You try to just, just laugh and try to turn it into a comedian or something. When I, the Bible called that person a dog. Don't give that which is holy to the dog. Amen. Now that's the type of dog. God calls him a dog. Amen. The word of God is precious. Makes no difference what you in, what you get caught in. The word of God is powerful enough to deliver you and set you free. You will accept it and believe it. But now if you flatly reject it. Amen. Ain't no need to wonder that person. Amen. People make mock of the truth and laugh and scoff at the truth. The Bible called him a dog. Oh, a dog. Don't give that which is holy to the dog. Neither cast your pearls among swine. Now, what do swine care about pearls? Man, he would like to have biscuits and meat and all, beans. And we used to call that slop. He cared more about slop than he would pearl. So, ain't no need to cast no pearls out there among the swine, God called them swines. Amen? They'll trump those pearls in the mud and then turn around and rend you. So there's no need to waste your time with these type people. Amen? All right, read. Ask. All right, now look here. The Bible said, ask. And it shall be given you. Ask, and it, this is the jar. you are acting like I'm preaching a sad message tonight. Man, this, this teaches how to get along with, how to be happy, how to have joy, how to have peace. Amen? Amen. Everybody said, do what? Ask. Ask. And it shall be given. And you. it shall be. This is the privilege that the saints have. Amen. The word does not have it. Listen, the Bible said, pray to God. In the ninth chapter, pray to St. John, the 31st verse, we know that God hears not sinners. So this is the privilege that the saints have. We have a privilege to go to God, knock and ask for what we want. Amen? Read. Seek and ye shall find. Seek and ye shall find. Knock. Knock. And it shall be opened and unto it, you. And the door shall be opened unto you. Now this is the blessing of the Lord. Amen? These are some of the benefits that go along with salvation. Amen? The sinner man does not have this opportunity to, to ask or to knock. Read. For everyone that asks it. Listen to what he says. For everyone that asks. Receive it. But now you have to ask in faith. Somebody says, well, man, so-and-so prayed for me, and I didn't get nothing. Wait, he prayed for this person. He went off shouting and rejoicing. Then he prayed for this one. 
And then they're now, what, what's the problem? You can't be in the preacher because he prayed for this and he got delivered. But the point is, Jesus said, according to your faith. See, that's something you have to do. You have to exercise faith. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Amen. Read. And he that seeketh, find it. And he that seeketh, find it. This is the assurance of God. Now, sometimes the enemy will get in there and try to fight you, but you can't get discouraged. God said it. God meant it. We can believe it. Amen. Sometimes when we see God about something, the enemy gets in there and he try to fight us and try to discourage us, but we must make up in our mind, I'm here to stay. Amen? God promised and I'm waiting on the read. And to him that knock it. And to him that knock it. It shall be open. It shall be open. Think about this. See, the enemy is coming in and trying to press you, get you off by yourself. That's when sometimes you shouldn't be alone. Amen? If you find out the devil going to talk to you and discourage you, then try not never be alone. Just like walking the street like it is now. They tell you, man, don't go some of these places. Don't you go by yourself. Huh? Man, don't you go by yourself. Go in twos, go in threes. Well, it's the same way here. If you feel like you're going to get on a plane, the devil going to talk you and talk you down and make you feel bad, then don't be caught in that place by yourself. Well, hey, man, take somebody along with you that's going to believe God with you. Now, you don't know nobody that don't believe God. Because they'll, they'll talk you out of every bit of your faith. I know that was going to happen. We shouldn't have never left. Have right. you, you ever went to pray for somebody and you get there and you get to, trying to, you see the people's in bad shape and they're done by the lost, all hope, about ready to give up. You start trying to build them up in faith there and then. Except unless they die with cancer. And you got somebody with, well, my mother died with cancer. You don't need that type of person with you. She had the same thing. And she died. Well, you don't need that. You leave that type of person at home. Amen. You're trying to build faith. Read. Or what man is there of you? Or what man is there of you? Whom if his son. Now listen, listen, God is telling us something. Now he done told us to act and it shall be given, seek and it shall be fine. Knock and the door shall be open. Now he's finna reaffirm what he said. Read. Of what man is there what of you? What man is there of you? Whom if his son asks bread. Whom if his son asks for what? Bread. Asks for bread. Will he give him a scarpin? Will scorpion? he give him a scarpin? No, you're not going to do that. You love your son. You're going to give him a scarpin for bread. Amen? So God is trying to, Jesus is trying to get us to see something. Read. Or if he asks a fish. Or if he asks for a fish. Will he give him a serpent? Will you give him a serpent? No. You give him what he asked for. Right? So what Jesus said, just like you will give him what he asked for, I'm going to give you what you asked for. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the privilege of being on the Lord's side. Amen? Amen. And what's so good about it, but God promised to meet our need regardless of the condition. Yeah. Amen? Whether well, this fame or what God promised to meet our needs. Yeah. How many know the portion of the wicked? Huh? Get me Job, I believe that's 27 and let's see there. Look at here. Let's get some joy in here. So go to sleep on me. 27 and 13. Listen to what it says. This, this is, is the portion of a wicked this man. This is the portion of a wicked man. You want to know the portion of a wicked man? Read. With God. With God. And the heritage of oppressors. And the heritage of what? Of oppressors. Read. Which they shall receive of the Almighty. Which the, the oppressor one that oppress you. Some of you on your job, man. Man, I got a devil on my job. My suit by just oppressing me. This is the portion of those. Read. If his children be multiplied. If his children be multiplied. It is for the sword. It's for the sword. If he have his children be multiplied, it's for the sword. They're going to get killed. Read. And his offspring. And his offspring. Shall not be satisfied. Shall not be bread. satisfied. Read. Those that remain of him. Those that remain of him. Shall be buried in death. Shall be buried in death. Listen, break it. The man that reject God, if he, he may have a few blessings, but they're only on this side. When he leave here, that's the end of it. 
but not so with the saints of God. Read. And his widows and his widows shall not weep. Shall not weep. Read. Though he heap up silver as the Though dust. Though he heap up silver as the dust. And prepare raiment and as prepare the clay. And prepare raiment as what? As the clay. As the clay. He may prepare it. He may prepare it. But the just shall put it on. Look at that. Go ahead and heap it up. The Bible said we shall enjoy. We shall put it on. Read. And the innocent shall divide the silver. And the innocent, that the right, innocent means righteous. The innocent shall do what? Divide the silver. Divide the silver. Look at that. Somebody lift your hand and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it pays to serve God. Amen. All right, let's get back to Matthew. If ye then. If ye then. Being evil. What? Being evil. Being evil. Now, if you then being evil. Know how to give good know gifts. Know how to give good gifts. Unto your children. Unto your children. How much more? How much more shall your father, shall your father which is in heaven, which is in heaven, give good things. Give good things. To them that ask to you. To them that ask for it. My, somebody ought to praise the Lord. Look at that. This is why I serve it when people talk about me. Give good gifts to what? To them that ask him. To them that ask him. Read. Therefore. Therefore. All things whatsoever. Therefore all things whatsoever. You would that men should do to that unto you. That you would that what? That men should do to you. That men should do to you. Do ye even. Do ye even. So to them. So to them. For this is the law and the prophet. For this is the law and the prophet. Now okay. Let's, let's look at this a little bit. I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Listen. Let's go with that one more time. Therefore, I'm just getting the lesson tonight. Can you see why this lesson, if we, if we obey to it, it can create joy and peace among ourselves, among our neighbors. Amen. This is what the Lord teaches how to live a successful, a victorious life down here. Read. All things whatsoever. All things whatsoever. You would that men you should would do to that you. Men. Listen, now, how, how do you want men to treat you? Just think for a second. How do you want people to, to treat you? Amen. Do you want them to knock you upside your head? Beat you out of everything? Steal from you? Rebuke you? Talk to you turbo? Huh? Oppress you? Well, let's take a little bit closer home. How would you like for your wife to treat you? Hmm? You want her to be real nice to you, don't you? Huh? I guess y'all don't care. And how'd you like your husband to treat you? Right, real nice. Amen. You want him to treat you like a husband, right? Amen. How a husband's supposed to treat his wife. How a wife's supposed to treat her husband. Amen. You want people to treat you real nice. Amen. Now listen to what he said. Let's go over it again. Therefore, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you, do you even so to them. All right, now what the Lord is saying is the way you want people to treat you, you treat them that same way. But this is not the way people want it done. They want you to treat them nice, but you can walk over them and do whatever. But God said this is not the way to do it. Amen? You treat people exactly the way you want them to treat you. Amen? Yes. So this is what makes it so beautiful. We got so many people that they do anything they're big enough to do. Then they think you ought to love it, you ought to like it, you ought to look over it. Just like I said so many times, sinfulness and praise God, a man and his wife break up before they get saved. Man, he wouldn't work, wouldn't keep a job. Now, this is bad. A man got a family. Every time you look around, there's another little one. And the rascal won't work. 
So that means somebody got to work. Amen. Okay, so if you don't work, that means either she got to have a good job. Don't first got one of the little one get ready to come. She got to go out on the county. When they when they come out there, they talk to them like they. You know, why do you want to put your wife through that? They talk to them terrible. You, sister, want your husband to treat you like this. You got to work. You got to pay all the bills and everything. And this rocker just in and out. Watching TV and going down the street playing dominoes. Won't work. You don't need a wife. You don't need a family. Amen? Now, okay. See, what, what are you doing? Now, if, if you treat her this way, this, do you mean that this is the way you want to be treated? Then I've seen them come in and finally come in and get saved. And then they get upset. Well, well, well they separate. But finally the wife get tired. Or the husband get tired. And say, look, I don't took enough. I'm not going to take no more. And they're gone. Then you run in here and get saved. But I don't understand. I tried to get my wife back and, and she wouldn't even talk to me. I told her I'm saved. That, that woman don't know. If she never been saved, she don't know nothing about being saved. The only thing she went about them hungry nights that she, uh, she went to bed, her stomach growling and all them people she had to face to pay the bills and and you going upside her head and she ducking. That's what she's thinking about. She don't know nothing about you being saved. What is saved? So what you got to do is prove something to her. Amen? So it may take six months. It may take a year. It may take two years. It may take three years. But Mary, that's too long. Well, how long did you put her through? How long did you put him through? Oh, I'm not getting many amen. I'm going to be hitting payday tonight. See, you want a miracle overnight, and you're not going to get no miracle like that overnight. Amen. See, the thing about you, you're going to have to get saved. Amen? And stay saved. And once she sees that you have changed, or he sees that you have changed, then you can start talking, but before then, you can forget it. Amen? So the point is, all right, pray good. Now, not only that, but anyway, even praise God on a job or wherever you go, you always pray good, practice, treat people the way you want them to treat you. And it will return. Amen? But you can't go giving people the peace of your mind and doing whatever you want to do. And then when the time comes for people to... To treat you a certain way, then praise God. You want everybody, everything to be real nice. It don't work that way. Amen. Oh, I'm not getting many amens tonight. But if we would learn to practice, to live by what the Word of God says, amen, it'd be a, this would be a beautiful place to live in. Amen. Because, see, this covers a whole lot of territory. Now, if I don't want Brother Michael to step on my toe, then I don't step on his. Amen? If I don't want nobody hollering at me, then I don't holler at people. Amen? If I want my wife to be real nice to me, then I treat her real nice. Amen? The other night, praise the Lord. Uh, man, it was cold. We left church the other night, and it was cold. And I turned the corner down there, and this fellow out there selling them little old string bean roses. I said, man, he said, oh, must want to be out here cold as he is. You seen them little old so Brother Tony said, yeah, well, you know, sometimes pray God, these men buy them roses to try to take them home to try to make peace at home. I said, well, if I was upset, that wouldn't, that wouldn't change it with me. You'd have to have more than one rose. Amen. But see, this is the way people, 
And the day that we live in, we're growing more that way now. People don't have compassion like they did when I was growing up. Brother, it used to be pregnant. People, when you got sick, people would come over, and man, they would clean the house up, and amen, they would cook for you. Amen. Even you back on the farm, sometimes man gets sick, they come over and ply his field. But now you can be next door, the people ain't starting you. Amen. See, praise God. That's when I said a lot of things, I think we ought to go back. Amen. That was more love, more concern about one another than now. Amen. Because people live, praise God, the way they wanted someone else to treat them, that's the way they treated other people. This is the reason I like to do this. Man, I, and especially elder people, I love everybody. Praise God. I believe in respecting elder people. I was taught that. I was brought up to do that. Amen. But some of the young people, amen. They'll run right out of that door there and run right over you if you're in the way. And what we were always taught to get back and let them. Amen. The same thing about ladies. Back in my day, praise God, we opened the doors for the ladies. If we was riding the bus, we got up and let them have. We didn't even have to know them and we wasn't frightened. But we got up and gave the lady the seat. But now since women live will come out, they don't appreciate. The other day, I opened the door for a young lady and she walked through that. Now, listen, I, I didn't have to hold that door. Now, I ain't frightened. When I think I, I'll do a compliment, you could say thank you. Blah! What's wrong with some of you ladies? Can't you say thank you? What have happened to this generation? Hey Amen. I was just taught that. I mean, you're not trying to flake, but you're a lady. And bring it, I think you do that courtesy. But now, the reason you, you're talking about you want to be equal with a man, so right now, some of you men say, well, act like a man. Take it. I never forget. I went out to St. Paul one day, and, and of course, they got a little better now, but man, you had a time getting a parking place close up. And this lady was coming out, and this lady, she's coming this way, and this man was coming this way. You know how people try to do to get a parking place. So when the lady pulled out, the man just rushed in and got the parking. Well, the lady didn't get to get it. So she said, now that wasn't very nice. So why didn't he? he said, listen, y'all want eager rights, so take your turn. And he just got out of his car and went on in there. But I don't think it should be like that. Amen? There are still some ladies around. And I think we brothers should treat them like ladies. But pray not for you to be treated like you need to act like a lady. Amen? Ain't nobody going to grab you. You open the door from, you walk through that, you can smile and say, thank you. Amen? What's wrong with that? Praise God, when we learn to get along with one another, things going to be a whole lot better. And this is what the Lord is teaching in this sermon on the mount. Amen? All right, stand on your feet tonight. I hope I said something that will encourage you tonight.